1967, I think. But he put it to music, and it's still one of the best songs in Songs of Praise. He also wrote the song, Let Our Praise to You Be As Incense. Um, and I was like, I was like, I don't know, 19, prayed for this uh, guy, and it was incredible. But he needed prayer, I prayed, and it was a very emotional and beautiful time. So we can pray for each other, and uh, you never know um, who you can encourage um, in, in that time. So let's pray for and care for one another. Moving on, Paul says, make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong. Six years ago, last Wednesday, something happened. I don't know if that can give you a clue, but it was 21-year-old Dylan Roof walked into a manual African Methodist Episcopal Church in South Carolina and shot and killed nine people. Ruth, a self-described white supremacist, was found guilty on all counts and was sentenced to death as a 21-year-old. Obviously, he's still on death row. Only 48 hours after having lost mothers, sisters, sons, husbands and wives, their loved ones appeared in the um, court for Ruth's bond hearing. And what transpired was something that no one could have anticipated. It was the first time that any of them came face to face with the person that had killed their loved one and perpetrated this terrible hate crime. The judge invited uh, anyone who would like to speak to say some words. First up was Nadine Collier, who lost her mother, Ethel Lance. I forgive you. You took something really precious from me and I will never talk to her again. I will never be able to hold her again but I forgive you and I have mercy on your soul. Collier said while fighting back tears. And one after the other, other family members uh, forgave Dylan as well. He had set out to start a race war, but the community reacted in a way completely the opposite of what Ruth was expecting. And that brought them together in an amazing way. Chris Singleton, who lost his mother as well, said, The narrative of forgiveness is submitting, and it means that you're weak, or people would think that. But I've realized that forgiving is so much tougher than holding a grudge. It takes a lot more courage to forgive than it does to say, I'm going to be upset about whatever forever. It takes a lot of courage to forgive. And in your questions there, you might like to think about that, the question there I've got, is it sometimes too soon to forgive? You know, and sometimes there's pushback um, on that issue. But uh, a huge thing, isn't it, to not pay back. As America again has erupted in race riots, we remember that the power of forgiveness is what is needed to break down the walls of racial um, hatred, political distance, um, ethnic um, clashes, and so on. Forgiveness is hard, is hard, but it's the fertilizer that makes the church flourish. Not gossip, blame, hidden agendas, or unhealed hurts, but being willing to be open with each other, and to be honest with each other, and for admit fault, and to forgive, and to give lashings of love and grace in the church. So payback, um, don't do it, Paul says. And then he goes on um, in that verse, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. There's an interesting question that is sometimes asked. Should we um, do good or care for the church or the world? Well, Paul answers this question beautifully. The answer is yes, yes. The answer is yes, of course we care for the church, but we also care for the world. Love each other and everybody else. And it's also very active, isn't it? What do we do? We do what is good. This is very, very practical. How do we do what is good? As we think about our church, there's obvious things in the community that we do that are good. We have tea and talk starting up on uh, Thursday morning. Uh, table tennis, a great chance to connect with people. Potluck meal next uh, Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Um, we've got in a couple of in a few weeks' time a market day. I don't know if you've noticed that, but we're going to have a market day on Sunday after church, right after church. Bring your um, quality used clothes, books, toys, household items, 
not too huge, no fridge and stinks. <laughs> At least you've got to buy it and they're coming <laughs> with a trailer. But um, probably not. Do it at home. But uh, these are the kind of things that we can do good in the community. That, but we don't just do them here, do we? Not just around the, in these four walls. We also do good out there in the community, in our homes, and so on. Using our talents, and our gifts, and our ideas, and that very, very precious commodity that all of us are very begrudging, <coughs> and that is time. Time, which is so precious to us, isn't it? And perhaps in the lockdown, as Robert shared, we, we appreciated a bit more time, which is uh, rapidly disappearing again, isn't it? <laughs> but it's precious, so can we give some time? So, um, I, in terms of doing good, one of the things I love to think about is the Jesus question. You know when the blind man uh, was there with Jesus, and uh, Jesus didn't just heal him straight away, he asked him a question. What is it that you want me to do for you? He asked. You think, well, it's kind of obvious, I can't see. No, Lord, I want to see. This is the question which really um, uh, empowers people and honours them and lets them tell us what they need rather than us thinking what they need. So, what is it that you want me to do for you? And then, of course, is there a way that we can help them practically? So, do good. Such practical <coughs> advice, isn't there? And the sky's the limit here. Um, what is good? That which enables human flourishing and points people to Jesus. Um, let me just say that earlier. Great. And so, that's the first part, is focusing on others. And then the second part is depending on God, depending on God, and there's a few underlines here, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. I really appreciated those songs today, Natalie, I think you picked up on the theme there, praise God, and so we sang some oldies but goodies that were designed for us to just praise God, you know, to God be the glory, ancient of days, 10,000 reasons. We just wanted to praise and thank God. And something happens, hopefully not only is He glorified, but our spirits are lifted as well when we praise God. So rejoice always. Pray continually. You know, of all the creatures in the world, there's only one that I know of um, that has been entrusted or given this privilege of talking to the Creator. And that is us. We have the privilege of speaking to the Creator. And not only to the boy, but He is real and He hears us. This is a privilege that only we have. Let's express it, let's enjoy this privilege, and then give thanks in all circumstances. And we might say, Lord, all circumstances? Uh, not that terrible thing that happened. Surely I can't give thanks in that circumstance. All I can say is, try it. Try it. It is such a healing thing to be able to give thanks, and then express our trust in God find that something mysterious happens. So this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. By mid-2018, it became obvious that our time at Eden, our previous church, was coming to an end. How could this be? This was my dream job. We'd practically raised our kids in this church. It was our family. And one of the things that I did at that time is I chose to thank God for a whole bunch of things in the situation. I thanked God for the support and nurturing that our kids received when they were in that church. Just huge. I thank God for the others, for the students and others who grew in faith, and some of them got married, and I married them, and some of them uh, were starting to have kids. I thank God for the crazy outreaches we did, including showing all 17 uh, live, live free games in the Rugby World Cup in 2011. And uh, I thank God for the India mission trip that our whole family was able to go on. Or the ministry to Muslim friends that we that developed out of, out of a month of prayer during Ramadan. The, all, and all the services and all of those things that happened. The partnership with the Chinese church. Uh, the church also, they helped us buy our own our house which, of course, we could never have done without their help. So there was a huge amount to thank God for, and it was great to focus on that. And at our leaving service, person after person stood up and just said how much they had appreciated um, our time there. It was incredibly encouraging our time. Of course, there were hard things, and I won't dwell on those. But by thanking God 
for the situation and in the situation, I was able to face this hard thing with a more positive frame of mind. Paul continues on, do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all, hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. For years I was very suspicious of anyone who came and claimed to have a word from the Lord. I have mellowed in recent years. I'm still pretty skeptical of claims that people might make, but I respect them for their faith and for their journey. Here Paul is saying, let us be open to listen to those who speak for God, but not just swallow what they say, hold us, bold us. Let us test what they say. How? The word. Ethics. Common sense. The community of faith. But primarily the word, the spirit of God. Showing us what is true. If God is speaking, I want to hear it. You know, in today's world, there is a cacophony of voices, isn't there? There's so many voices. Um, there's so many opinions. There's such outrage, isn't there? Everyone's so angry. Have you ever noticed that? There's so, um, there's so many uh, people um, trying to yell above everybody else. It is confusing, to say the least. Lord, I want your word. I want the real story. Give me your word. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And then Paul says these beautiful words. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Those are wonderful words, aren't they? Wonderful words. We have been called to be sons and daughters of the living God, the King of Kings. We are sanctified, Paul tells us in Romans, and a bunch of other big words as well that have already occurred to us. But we live in this awkward in-between, as I said before, between the gore and the glory. And in the meantime, God wants us to flourish together, to thrive together. How much of Christian discipleship is about relationships? If we think of discipleship as um, God and people, then the reality is that it's 100% relationships. 100% relationships. Discipleship. It's wonderful to be able to stream services and tune in online, but the Christian life is a team sport. We need each other. We can't just practice in front of the mirror, if you get my drift. And we need each other not just to show up and give my sermon the big tick, although of course that's fine, but to warn those who are idle and disruptive Encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone, to not pay back wrong for long, to strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. And we do that by depending on God, because it's a tall order without God's help. A bunch of selfish people are not going to be God's radical new community in a desperately needy world without a lot of help. And so we must depend on Him. We must rejoice, pray, give thanks, and listen to his voice. Actually, it's quite simple, isn't it? We depend on God. We focus on the needs of others. And we remember that God calls us his people, his children, and that nothing and no one can ever take that away from us. Lord, thank you so much that uh, you have called us to be your children you have given us your spirit to uh, convict us of sin and reveal to us your truth. Lord, we uh, just ask you to speak to us now to hear those <laughs> words that you might be saying to us. There are so many voices in the world, Lord, and we can get caught up in them. Help us to hear your voice and respond to you. Thank you for that promise that you will make us complete whole, uh, without fault, without blame, before your presence. You are faithful and you will do it. Thank you. We love you. Amen. Amen.